This video was brought to you by the generosity of my supporters on Coffee. Thank you for supporting the channel. Hello, my lovelies. My name is Gilbert Dorvalian, and the plan for today is to show you how to make lavender sachets. Now, these are a really great little Christmas present, especially for costumers, and the reason for that is that lavender is a great thing that keeps away moths. So if you have a lot of wool or delicate fabrics in your stash, or in your costume wardrobe, or in your normal wardrobe, or in your history-bounding wardrobe, or in your cosplay wardrobe, you can use lavender sachets to help keep away moths and it's a really great natural way of dealing with that. Plus, you know, <sighs> I mean, lavender is a bit of an old-fashioned scent, but I quite enjoy it as long as it's not too strong, and it's very cottagecore kind of history-bounding historical scent, so it's a really great for that as well. Now, this video is going to cover it from the very beginning, including picking the lavender, drying the lavender, and then making the sachets as well. There is one aspect of it that is additional that I haven't covered, but I will be linking to another video down below if you want to go the fancy route that I went, but there are other options for that bit, which I will cover when we get to it. This should be a one-stop shop, but obviously, if you are wanting to do them for this Christmas, it's too late to collect the lavender yourself. So I will include timestamps down below if you want to skip forward or skip a part because that part isn't relevant to you. But with all that said, there's not really a lot more to say, so let's just get started. For me, this starts early one morning at the end of August with harvesting lavender, but since growing seasons vary worldwide, I can't tell you exactly when the best time will be for you. This was actually a touch late for me as well, but since it was the last harvest I did of the season, it wasn't too bad. Depending on your area, you might be able to get two harvests, one in early spring and one in autumn. What you're looking for is lavender buds that are fully grown, no green left except for the stem and the leaves, and preferably a few flowers just coming out. If your stem is more of a grey purple rather than the bright fresh green, it's a bit over which isn't the end of the world but won't give you as potent a scent. Speaking of which, it's best to harvest early in the day when the flowers smell the strongest but after any dew has dried off. This is the case for most herbs. The advantage of harvesting your lavender is that you prune it at the same time, so if you're harvesting in your own garden, you're doing two jobs at once. You want to cut each stem just below a set of leaves, but be careful not to go back into any dead wood or the stem won't grow back. Pruning your lavender will help it grow back bushier and healthier, so if you don't do a complete job during this harvest, remember to come back and finish the job before the end of the growing season. Please note that this only applies to English lavender, other varieties aren't as hard and should be cared for differently. I find it easier to make bunches as I'm cutting, but you might prefer to work from a big bunch. Go with what feels natural for you. Depending on age and size of your plant, you can take more or less, but you'd be surprised how much you can take. This was my third harvest this year, and I took roughly the same amount each time, and as you can see, my plants still have plenty of flowers left for the bees. And once you're done with harvesting, it's time to prepare your lavender to dry. Remove any leaves and any little sprigs from each stem. This will help them dry more evenly. You can be more or less precise with this, but I like to remove everything except for the main stem. And I group any removed buds into bunches of roughly the same size to dry as well. The really tiny sprigs I set on a plate to dry by themselves. Gather a group of stems into a bunch. Don't make them too large or air won't be able to flow through them. A bunch of around 15 to 20 stems is best. 
trim the ends so that each bunch is even, and then secure them with elastic bands or twine. Elastic bands have the advantage that they will shrink with the stems as they dry, but obviously twine is more sustainable, assuming you don't have a hoard of elastic bands saved from vegetables like we do. Hang your bunches somewhere dry and out of the light to preserve the colour. They'll need at least two to three weeks to dry, depending on the weather and your climate, and you can tell when they're dry because the stems will snap cleanly rather than bending. Once your lavender is dry, you'll need to remove the buds. Lay down a bit of newspaper under your bundles before removing them so you can gather any buds that fall. The buds should come away from the stem easily with just a little bit of encouragement. and then they can be stored in an airtight pot or jar in a dry dark place. The stems can be composted or laid down in the garden to help discourage pests. If you're not lucky enough to be able to harvest your own lavender, lavender buds can be brought online or sometimes in health stores. For lavender bags, I do a half-half mix of lavender and rice, partly because mixing it up feels witchy and fun, but also because it helps to keep the lavender dry and helps to weigh the bags out so they feel more solid. Measure by volume rather than weight, since rice weighs much more than lavender. And now it's time to finally start the sewing and make some sachets. These have both an internal and external bag, so it's easier to switch them out or reuse them once the lavender has run out of scent. Starting with the internal bag, you want a natural fibre with a loose weave. I picked up a cotton where the weave was patterned to almost be holy in places, which I thought was perfect. Don't forget to pre-wash and press your fabric. For each bag you'll want two rectangles, both 10.5cm wide and 13cm tall, allowing for a 1.5cm seam allowance on each side. Pin them together on all sides, but mark a gap of about 5cm on the top of one side to turn the sachet out and fill it up through. Sew the edges together using a straight stitch, remembering to leave that gap, and finish the edges with a zigzag stitch if necessary. Clip the corners and then turn your bag through, and then press it. If you have a funnel, it makes filling them a lot easier, but you can make one from thick paper or thin cardboard by rolling a cone and cutting off the tip. Fill your sachet until it's full enough that it doesn't shake, but you can still squeeze it without anything threatening to break, and then secure it with a ladder stitch or a whip stitch. Now you have a perfectly finished lavender sachet, and it would be perfectly reasonable to leave them at this stage, but to make the decorative outer back continue. 
For this bag, you'll once again want a loose weave fabric of a natural fibre, like this blue cotton. After pre-washing and pressing, mark a rectangle 21cm by 16.5cm, again allowing for the seam allowance. Mark a 9 by 9.5cm rectangle on one side, offset from the inner corner by the 1.5cm seam allowance. This is the area that you'll have to embroider in. I recommend doing the embroidery before you cut your piece out, since it's such a small piece that it'll be difficult to fit it in a hoop otherwise. The top of your piece is the side that has more space. This is what will be turned over to make the gather top later. Start by drawing three lines that intersect about a third of the way up from the bottom of your section. These will be your lavender stems. You can also plan where you're going to put your buds if you want, but I like to freehand that and see what looks good. The stems will be sewn in stem stitch, which is sort of like the reverse of a back stitch. Start from the back of the fabric and make one stitch. Don't pull the thread taut yet, instead come back up in the middle of the stitch, being careful not to pass the needle through the thread. Now pull it taut so that the first stitch is slightly offset by the second one. Pass the needle back through the fabric half a stitch forward and then continue, coming up at the end of your very first stitch, which is now in the middle of your current stitch. Work all three stems and then it's time to do some lavender buds. Lazy Daisy works great for these, just remember to keep them a bit loose so they have that nice round effect. Start from the back of the fabric and pass your needle through it. Then come back down again right next to the first stitch, being careful not to pass through the fabric at the same point. Don't pull it taut, instead go to the point where you want your bud to end and push the needle up through your fabric there, inside the loop you just made. Now pull it taut as you want it, and then pass the needle through again on the other side of the loop, fastening it in place. Then start again, coming through next to the stem. Continue making pairs of buds on either side of your stem until you're happy with each one. And finally, use something a little bit thicker to make a ribbon. You might need a needle with a particularly large eye for this. Knot one end and start from the outside of your fabric. Pass it through the fabric, next to where all three stems meet, and then back out on the other side. Then tie it in a bow, trim off the other side, and put a knot in that side as well, so it can't be pulled out even if the bow comes undone. Now it's on to the construction of the bag. Cut out your pre-marked rectangle and pin together the sides and the bottom in an L shape. Sew these on the fashion side of your fabric so you can see your embroidery with a one centimeter seam and a straight stitch. Trim the fabric as close to the seam as you can, then press it and turn it inside out. Pin your L shape again, this time on the inside, and sew it again, this time with half a centimeter seam allowance. Congratulations, you've done a French seam. Press your seam again, but don't turn it the right way around just yet. To make the channel to gather it through, first zigzag the open top of your bag if your fabric is prone to fraying. Then mark a line 2cm down and turn the top edge down to meet it, so 1cm of the top is turned over. Pin it in place and sew it down as close to the raw edge as you can manage. Then mark a second line 4cm down and turn the top to meet it again, so you have a channel 2cm wide. Whip stitch this into place using little stitches 
fibres that catch only a few threads of the outside layer. You could also sew it on machine, but the bags are so small and fiddly that I find it easier to do it by hand. Now you can turn it the right way round. The last step is to make two eyelets. Use an owl if you have one to make two holes in your channel. If you don't have one, try and carefully work a pair of sharp scissors through the weave of the fabric rather than cutting threads. I recommend doing them on the side that doesn't have the seam so you're not trying to sew around it. Work your eyelets in by passing your needle through a little way from the hole and then through the hole and back out next to the first stitch. When you pull it taut, it should pull the fabric away from the edge holding the eyelet open. You might need to reopen them a couple of times as you sew. And once that's finished off, the last thing to do is to pass a cord through your eyelets. I finger loop braided a cord using Morgan Donna's tutorial, which I'm not going to show here, but you could just as easily buy or braid a cord using the normal free strand braid. Use a safety pin to make it easier to work your cord through. Finally, slip your lavender sachet into the bag and then you're done. The lavender can be reactivated by squeezing it to bruise the buds, so it should last for some time, but when it does stop smelling it can be replaced, or the inside bag can be reopened and refilled. Hang them in your wardrobe, or slip them into a drawer to keep things smelling fresh and to help keep away the moths. And that's it! I hope you enjoyed that, I did try at the beginning before winter happened to go for a slightly di different aesthetic. Not sure how well it worked, we shall see. And I hope that it gives you an idea for gifts that you can make yourself that might be a little bit more sustainable maybe that you can give out to your friends and family. These are a really great beginners project both for embroidery and for sewing because of what's on there is relatively simple and easy to learn. The great thing about doing something like this as a present is that you do lots of them in one go. So you get really used to doing those techniques and you will pick them up a lot quicker. You'll find that the first ones you do are a little bit worse than the later ones that you do. So maybe keep the first one for yourself and then you can gift out the rest of them or something like that. That's what I normally do when I'm doing a new craft for Christmas or birthday presents. I keep the first one myself, which is normally the less decorative one, and then hand out the rest of them. But I don't think there's much more to say. I hope you enjoyed that. My question for you today is what do you think of lavender? So I said at the beginning that I quite like it as long as it isn't too strong, and I know that's a bit of a opinion. So what's your opinion on that? Lavender is... <sighs> it can be very overpowering very quickly, that's why I say it the way that I do, but I quite like it in small doses. Uh, I've never tried baking with lavender either, but I'm sure that that is like rose water where it can be really overpowering really quickly. So if you tried baking, let me know. Let me know how that went. Thank you for watching the video. And as always, a huge thank you to all of my lovely subscribers and to all of the generous people over on Coffee. You guys mean the world to me. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this or found it useful, please think about giving me a like or subscribing if you're not already for more sewing or costume related content or donating to my Coffee if you're able. Stay safe, stay sensible, and I shall see you again soon. Bye.